Why does anything exist? What was there from the very beginning, total emptiness? Or did something exist out of necessity for all eternity? Could there have been a pivotal moment when nothing evolved into something? Why not complete emptiness? Is reality eternal? If not, would it at some point surrender itself to eternal absence? Is total emptiness even possible? If reality is brought into existence, does it require an external driver to initiate its being? Is its creation natural or supernatural? What's the purpose behind reality? Does it just exist for no reason? What lies at the very core of existence? What's behind the genesis of it all? Is our universe just one fragment of reality or is it everything that exists? What triggered the creation of our universe? Was it a random process? Is it an effect, a product of something more fundamental? What's the mechanism behind a universe generator? What does the realm that precedes our universe even look like? Why did the sequence of events that led to the current state of the universe occurred? And why this specific sequence was chosen over any other possibility? Reality could have been buried deep within eternal non-existence, yet against all odds reality prevails. Why existence? Complete darkness, complete emptiness, and no space or time. Imagine a reality devoid of all matter, energy, space, time, even physical laws. This, dear listener, was the state of the universe before its birth. In this vast void, there was neither light nor darkness, for there was no one and nothing to perceive it. The concept of before is a tricky one, as time itself did not exist. There was no before, no after. There was no here, no there just an infinite, timeless, spaceless non-existence. In this non-reality, there were no stars to twinkle, no galaxies to spiral, no planets to orbit. There was no matter to form these celestial bodies, no energy to fuel their movements. There were no atoms, no protons, no electrons. Not even the smallest units of matter existed in this pre-universe state. Moreover, there were no physical laws to govern the non-existent matter and energy. There was no gravity to pull things together, no electromagnetism to push things apart. There was no strong force to hold an atom's nucleus together, no weak force to allow atoms to interact. The rules that dictate how our universe works simply did not exist. This is a difficult concept to grasp, as our minds are so rooted in a reality defined by space, time, matter, energy and laws of physics. But in this primordial state, none of these defining features of our current reality existed. As we venture into this journey, let's keep in mind that our understanding of the universe and its origins is based on our current knowledge and observations. There is much we don't know, and even more that we don't know that we don't know. So, what was this nothingness like? It's impossible to say. Without any physical existence or laws to describe, the void before the universe was a realm beyond human comprehension. It was the epitome of emptiness, the apex of nothingness. From this void of nothingness came everything we know and don't know, the universe. In this nothingness, something sparked, a phenomenon that gave birth to our universe. Imagine the unfathomable. A point smaller than a full stop on this script, yet brimming with an energy so potent that it held the capacity to birth the entirety of existence. This is the concept of singularity, the heart of the Big Bang theory. With an explosive force beyond comprehension, this infinitesimal point exploded and began expanding at an astronomical rate. In a fraction of a second, it was larger than a galaxy. This wasn't an explosion in the traditional sense occurring within space and time. No, this was an explosion of space and time. The Big Bang didn't occur in the universe. The Big Bang created the universe. This event brought forth a soup of elementary particles. Quarks, electrons and their antimatter counterparts filled the universe. These particles were too energetic to form atoms, so they zipped around freely in what we now call the quark-gluon plasma. As the universe expanded, it cooled. This allowed quarks to combine and form protons and neutrons. After a few minutes, these particles started to come together to form the nuclei of the simplest elements, hydrogen and helium. Amidst this cosmic chaos, space and time continued to evolve, creating a cosmic fabric that would eventually cradle galaxies, stars and planets. The universe was no longer a point of singularity, but an expanding cosmos of energy and matter. But what about the evidence, you might ask? Well, we can still hear the echoes of the Big Bang today. This cosmic background radiation permeates the universe, 
a relic from when the cosmos was just 380,000 years old, and it's a cornerstone of our understanding of the universe's birth. And thus, from a single point of singularity, the universe was born, expanding and evolving into the cosmos we observe today. Born from a singularity, the universe began its journey of evolution. Picture this. A cosmic infant, hot and dense, expanding rapidly. As it expanded, it cooled. And this cooling allowed the first atoms to form primarily hydrogen and helium. These atoms, the building blocks of all matter, would go on to form the stars, galaxies and planets we see today. But how did these atoms organize themselves into such intricate structures? This is where the magic of gravity comes in. Gravity, the great cosmic sculptor, began to pull these atoms together. Over hundreds of millions of years, these gatherings of atoms would eventually ignite, forming the first stars. The stars were the universe's factories, creating heavier elements through the process of nuclear fusion. Their lives and deaths in fiery supernovae scattered these elements across the cosmos, leading to the formation of second and third generation stars and their accompanying planets. Meanwhile, the universe continued its relentless expansion. As it did so, it cooled even further, leading to the formation of the cosmic microwave background radiation. This radiation, discovered serendipitously in the mid-20th century, is like a baby picture of the universe. It gives us a snapshot of the universe as it was roughly 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And it's one of the strongest pieces of evidence we have for the universe's evolution. From a hot, dense singularity to a vast, cool cosmos filled with galaxies, stars and planets, the universe has come a long way. But it's not done yet. The universe continues to expand and to evolve. It's galaxies moving away from each other as if on the surface of an inflating balloon. It's a grand cosmic dance, choreographed by the laws of physics, and it's happening right now, every second of every day. The universe, once a singularity, now a vast expanse of galaxies, stars and planets, continues its journey of expansion and evolution. The universe, in its vastness, is built from the smallest of building blocks. Imagine a boundless cosmic ocean, teeming with galaxies, stars and planets. Now reduce this grandeur to its most fundamental components, the atoms. Atoms, minuscule entities, are the architects of this colossal cosmic theatre. They are the bricks and mortar of stars, planets and everything else we observe in the universe. Stars, these celestial forges, are where the magic happens. The intense heat and pressure at their cores facilitate nuclear fusion, a process that merges lighter atoms to form heavier ones. Hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium and the fusion process continues, creating heavier and heavier elements. It's a cosmic alchemy, transmuting the simplest of elements into the more complex ones, the ones that constitute the planets, including our very own Earth. You see, the atoms that make up the Earth, the air we breathe, the water we drink, even the cells in our bodies, were once part of a star. In a way, we are all stardust, a poetic testament to our intimate connection with the universe. But the universe isn't just about matter, it's also about energy. The concept of matter and energy conservation holds that the total amount of matter and energy in the universe remains constant. Energy can change forms and matter can be converted into energy and vice versa, but their sum is always conserved. This principle underpins the workings of the universe from the nuclear fusion in stars to the expansion of the universe itself. The universe then is a magnificent symphony of matter and energy. From the smallest atom to the largest galaxy, every entity plays its part in this cosmic ballet. It's a grand spectacle where the tiniest of particles come together to create the vastness that surrounds us. From atoms to galaxies, the universe is a beautiful orchestration of matter and energy. From its humble beginnings as a singularity, the universe has come a long way. It has grown from an infinitesimal point of unimaginable density and heat to the sprawling cosmic panorama we perceive today. Let's journey into the world of today's universe. It's a place where the ordinary matter we're familiar with, the planets, stars, galaxies, even you and I, make up a mere 5%. The remaining 95% is shrouded in mystery, divided between dark energy and dark matter. These invisible yet dominant entities silently govern the universe's structure and its fate. Dark matter, elusive and unseen, 
clings to galaxies, providing the gravitational glue that holds them together. Without it, galaxies would quite literally unravel, their stars flung out into the cosmic void. The evidence of its existence lies in its gravity, bending the path of light from distant galaxies, an effect we've termed gravitational lensing. On the other hand, dark energy, the ultimate enigma, drives the universe's continued expansion. This mysterious force works against gravity, pushing galaxies apart, making the cosmos grow larger and larger, faster and faster with every passing moment. Yet despite its relentless expansion, the universe remains a place of creation and transformation. Stars continue to be born, live and die, cycling their elements back into the cosmos. These elements, formed in the heart of stars, have journeyed across cosmic timescales to become the building blocks of planets, of life, of us. Each galaxy, a city of stars, is an architect of the universe. Our own Milky Way, a barred spiral galaxy, is but one among billions, each with its own story, its own history, its own contribution to the universe's grand saga. From its earliest moments to the present day, the universe has been and continues to be a symphony of creation and evolution. It is a testament to the power of natural laws, to the beauty of complexity arising from simplicity. As we gaze into the cosmos, we gaze into our past, present and future. The universe, our home, continues its eternal dance of existence. In the words of Albert Einstein, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. Today, we delve into the infinite expanse of the cosmos to a concept that will challenge your perception of the universe. The universe, it's a vast, seemingly endless expanse that stretches beyond the farthest reaches of our comprehension. We live in a world where we're constantly exploring, seeking to understand the mysteries and wonders that lie beyond our earthly confines. Yet as we peer through our telescopes and send our probes hurtling into the cosmos, we're constantly reminded of our own insignificance. We're but a tiny speck in the grand tapestry of the universe. Have you ever stopped to consider the idea of infinity? It's a concept that's hard to grasp. We live in a universe that's so vast, so expansive, that it's possible it may have no end. It's a thought that's both awe-inspiring and somewhat terrifying. But what if I told you that our universe, as vast and infinite as it may seem, could be just one of an infinite number of other universes? This is the concept of the multiverse, a theory that suggests that there may be countless other realms of existence, each with their own laws of physics and unique properties. This concept of a multiverse is not just a figment of science fiction. It's a theory that's deeply rooted in the world of quantum physics and cosmology. It's a concept that's tied to the theory of eternal inflation, a model that suggests that the universe's inflationary phase may last indefinitely in most regions. So as we stand on the precipice of the unknown, ready to delve into the mysteries of the cosmos, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer scale and complexity of the universe. It's a reminder of our place in the grand scheme of things, a humbling notion that we're but stardust in an ever-expanding sea of galaxies. As we journey further into the cosmos, remember, we are but stardust in an ever-expanding sea of galaxies. Now let's delve into the concept of eternal inflation. Inflation is an inherently quantum phenomenon. It follows that it cannot end at any point in space at the same time. As a consequence, Inflation is eternal. Once it begins, there will always be at least one region of exponentially expanding space from which new universes similar to ours or different will originate. Now, imagine blowing up a balloon. As you inflate it, every point on the balloon's surface moves away from every other point. This is a simplified analogy of the universe's expansion. But what if this inflation never stops? What if, like the balloon, the universe continues to inflate, not for a moment, a day, or a millennium, but indefinitely? This is the concept of eternal inflation, a theoretical model within the grand framework of the Big Bang Theory. It proposes that the universe's inflationary phase lasts indefinitely in most regions, leading to the creation of a vast multiverse. A multiverse, mind you, is an ensemble of countless universes, each with its unique laws and properties, the theory of eternal inflation was introduced by Paul Steinhardt in the year of 1983. 
Steinhardt suggested that while inflation may not extend infinitely into the past, it is likely to continue indefinitely into the future. This idea emerged as a solution to the graceful exit problem in the original inflationary model proposed by Alan Guth in 1979. But it wasn't just Steinhardt and Guth. Other researchers, including Andre Linder and Alexander Vilenkin, contributed significantly to the development of eternal inflation theory. They banked on quantum fluctuations, those tiny ripples in the fabric of space-time, to sustain perpetual inflation. However, recent studies have raised questions about the viability of eternal inflation. Some suggest that the theory may not be able to maintain eternal expansion due to random quantum fluctuations leading to space-time singularities. Yet, despite these ongoing debates, eternal inflation remains a significant concept in cosmology, offering insights into the potential existence of a diverse multiverse. Eternal inflation paints a picture of a universe that is forever growing, forever creating new realms of existence. But what does this mean for our understanding of the cosmos? The answer to that, my dear listener, lies in the implications and controversies surrounding this fascinating theory. And that's where we're headed next. In the realm of eternal inflation, the universe is akin to a cosmic bakery, continually producing new loaves of universe. Each loaf or region of space could have different physical properties, leading to a diverse multiverse. Dive with me now into the implications of eternal inflation. Picture a bakery, the universe's own patisserie, tirelessly churning out fresh loaves of universe. Each loaf isn't a mere replica of the last, but rather a unique creation. Each piece of this cosmic bread, each region of space, can have its own unique physical properties. It's an idea that takes the notion of diversity to an entirely new level. Imagine a grand cosmic bakery, a place where universes are baked fresh daily. Each universe, like a loaf of bread, is unique and distinct. Some might be similar to ours, while others could be vastly different, obeying different laws of physics, hosting different forms of matter, and perhaps even life. This is the idea of a multiverse, a theoretical cosmos teeming with a vast number of universes, each with its own unique properties. It's as if the cosmic baker has an infinite number of recipes, each yielding a different kind of universe. But what does this mean for us? What are the implications of living in a multiverse, one of countless universes baked in the cosmic oven of eternal inflation? For one, it would mean that our universe isn't the only game in town. There could be other universes out there, some so different from ours, that they're beyond our wildest imagination. In some of these universes, the laws of physics might be so alien that they would seem like magic to us. Secondly, it would mean that the universe as we know it is just one tiny piece of a much larger, much stranger cosmos. We might be living in a cosmic bubble, unaware of the vast multiverse beyond our universe. However, the idea of a diverse multiverse isn't just mind-boggling. It also has profound implications for our understanding of the universe and our place in it. It challenges our notions of uniqueness and centrality, and it raises new questions about the nature of reality itself. The concept of eternal inflation takes us on a journey beyond our known universe, into a realm of infinite possibilities. Yet, as with any scientific theory, it's not without its controversies. Belief in the multiverse isn't merely science fiction, it's wishful and embarrassing science fantasy. Let's embark on a journey, a journey that transcends the confines of our world to the vast uncharted territories of the cosmos, among the swirling galaxies and the twinkling stars, we find our universe, our cosmic home. It's an awe-inspiring spectacle, a testament to the grandeur of existence. But amid the cosmic spectacle, there's a whisper of a question that has been echoing through the ages. Why is the universe so perfectly suited for us? This isn't just a philosophical musing. It's a scientific curiosity that's led to a compelling theory. The anthropic universe theory. The anthropic universe theory posits something extraordinary. It suggests that our universe, in its infinite complexity, appears to be finely tuned for life. It's as if the cosmos itself has been orchestrated, every celestial note playing in perfect harmony to create a symphony of existence. Contrast this with the multiverse theory, a speculative belief in an infinite number of universes, each with its own set of physical laws. It's an enticing concept, isn't it? 
an infinite canvas of cosmic possibilities. But here's the catch. For all its allure, the multiverse theory lacks scientific evidence. It's merely a philosophical speculation, a wishful science fantasy. So where does this leave us, with a universe that seems to be meticulously crafted for life, for us, against a backdrop of endless cosmic mystery? It's a thought that's both humbling and exhilarating. In the vast cosmic canvas, we find our existence not merely a chance, but perhaps a purposeful design. The universe, it seems, has been delicately adjusted to allow for the existence of life. A statement that sounds more like a line from a poetic verse rather than a scientific observation, isn't it? But let's take a closer look at what this means in the context of the anthropic universe theory. Imagine the universe as an intricate puzzle, with each piece representing a fundamental force or parameter. Gravity, the invisible force that keeps us grounded and the planets orbiting the sun. Electromagnetic force, which allows for the structure and interaction of atoms, and the nuclear force that binds the atomic nucleus together. Each of these forces plays a crucial role in the grand cosmic theater. But what if the values of these parameters were to change? What if gravity was just a smidgen stronger or weaker? Or the electromagnetic force was slightly off? The consequences could be catastrophic. Planets might be flung out of their orbits, atoms could disintegrate, and stars could fail to ignite. In short, the universe as we know it could become uninhabitable. This is not mere speculation. Scientists have crunched the numbers, and the results are startling. Even the slightest deviation in these fundamental constants could lead to a universe devoid of life. It's akin to walking a tightrope, where a misstep in either direction could spell disaster. Yet, here we are, living breathing and marvelling at the cosmos. The universe is not just a chaotic jumble of stars and galaxies. It appears to be fine-tuned, with each parameter adjusted just so to allow for the existence of life. This brings us to an intriguing question. Is this fine-tuning a mere cosmic coincidence, or is there a grand cosmic design at play? This question has sparked debates among scientists and philosophers alike. But regardless of the answer, one thing is clear. Life, as we know it, precariously exists on this fine balance. In the realm of the unknown, the multiverse theory finds its home. The multiverse, a concept that suggests the existence of infinite universes, each with its own laws of physics, its own realities, its own versions of you and me. It's an idea that tickles the imagination, prompting us to ponder if there's another version of us out there living a different life in a different universe. But let's take a step back for a moment. The multiverse theory, while captivating, isn't necessarily grounded in empirical science. It's more akin to philosophical speculation, a conjecture that springs from the human desire to understand the infinite and the unknown. The multiverse theory arose as a response to the anthropic principle, the concept that the universe is finely tuned to support life. This fine-tuning, some argue, hints at the existence of a purposeful creator. But the multiverse theory offers an alternative explanation. Instead of one universe fine-tuned for life, there could be an infinite number of universes, each with different physical constants. In this vast cosmic lottery, it's not surprising that at least one universe, ours, has conditions suitable for life. However, the multiverse theory is not without its critics. It lacks empirical evidence. There's no way, as of now, to observe or measure these other universes. It's a theory that exists largely in the realm of thought, unverifiable and unfalsifiable. It's a fascinating idea, but one that remains firmly in the realm of speculation. The multiverse theory is a testament to human curiosity and our insatiable desire to understand the cosmos. It's a fascinating concept, one that challenges our understanding of reality and our place in the universe. But until we can gather concrete evidence, it remains just that, a concept, an idea, a philosophical speculation. The multiverse, while fascinating, remains a speculation, a figment of philosophical meandering. If the universe is indeed fine-tuned for life, what does this imply? The question hangs in the air, a thought-provoking puzzle that invites us to delve into the intricate mysteries of existence. The fine-tuning of the universe suggests a remarkable precision, a delicate balance that allows life to flourish. 
It's as if the cosmos is a grand orchestra, each element, each law of physics playing its part in perfect harmony to produce a symphony of life. But who or what is the conductor of this cosmic orchestra? Some suggest the possibility of a benevolent creator, an architect of the cosmos, whose grand design we are only beginning to comprehend. This perspective opens the door to a profound sense of awe and wonder, a reverence for the universe and our place within it. Could it be that we are not mere accidents of nature, but an intentional part of a grand cosmic plan? But let's tread cautiously. The notion of a fine-tuned universe doesn't necessitate the existence of a creator. It simply raises the question, offering a tantalizing hint that there may be more to the story of existence than we currently understand. It's a theory that aligns with the scientific spirit of inquiry, inviting us to explore, to question, to seek. The implications of a fine-tuned universe extend beyond the realm of philosophy and religion, influencing our understanding of the cosmos itself. It prompts us to consider the nature of the universe's laws, the interplay of forces that have shaped reality as we know it. It challenges us to unravel the secrets of the cosmos, to decipher the cosmic code that underpins our existence. In the grand scheme of things, a fine-tuned universe implies that life isn't an anomaly, but an integral part of the cosmic tapestry, woven into the very fabric of existence. It suggests that we are not merely spectators in the cosmic theatre, but active participants in the grand play of the universe. The universe, vast and infinite, hold mysteries beyond our comprehension. This celestial expanse, teeming with countless galaxies, stars and celestial bodies, is an enigma that continues to bewilder and fascinate us. It's like an elaborate cosmic puzzle, waiting for us to piece together its myriad of secrets. Just imagine the scale of our universe. It's so vast that light, traveling at a speed of about 186,000 miles per second, takes over 13 billion years to reach us from the furthest corners. And that's only the observable universe. What lies beyond it in the uncharted territories of the cosmos is an enigma that continues to elude us. This infinite nature of the universe, its boundless expanse, is what makes it so profoundly mysterious. Each star we see in the night sky could host a planetary system with its own unique set of rules. Each galaxy could harbor civilizations, advanced or primitive, that we can only dream of. The possibilities are as endless as the cosmos itself, yet even with all its infinite possibilities, the universe is not chaotic. It's governed by a set of fundamental laws. Laws that allow for the existence of galaxies, stars, planets, and even life as we know it. These laws are so precise, so finely tuned, that even the slightest deviation could render the universe uninhabitable. But what's truly mind-boggling is that we, beings of finite minds and limited understanding, have managed to decipher some of these cosmic secrets. We've peered into the farthest reaches of the cosmos, discovered new celestial bodies and unraveled the workings of the universe, one cosmic mystery at a time. Yet despite our strides in understanding the cosmos, we've barely scratched the surface. The universe in all its infinite glory still holds countless mysteries waiting to be discovered. Mysteries that challenge our understanding of reality and push the boundaries of our knowledge. In this grand cosmic theater, we are but spectators, forever intrigued by the mysteries the universe unfolds. In our common experience, you can't get something for nothing. This is a principle that guides our understanding of the world. Every effect we witness, every event that unfolds, every change that we perceive, they all have a cause. A seed sprouts into a tree because it receives sunlight, water and nutrients. A cup shatters when it is dropped because of the force of gravity and the hardness of the floor. This principle of cause and effect is deeply ingrained in us, forming the backbone of our understanding of the world. It forms the very foundation of logic and reason, of science and philosophy. It's the principle of causality, the idea that nothing comes from nothing. But what if I told you that there's a realm, a realm beyond our common experience, where this principle doesn't apply? A realm where the impossible becomes possible, where the laws of physics as we know them are turned on their heads. But there is a realm where this rule doesn't apply, a realm where something can emerge from nothing. 
Welcome to the quantum realm. Here the rules you've been accustomed to in the everyday world don't apply. We're in a domain where classical physics takes a back seat and quantum physics reigns supreme. Quantum physics, quite simply, is the study of the very small, the atomic and subatomic level of our universe. It's a place where particles can exist in multiple places at once or spin in two directions simultaneously, a place where the future can affect the past. It's a realm of possibilities, probabilities and uncertainties. Speaking of uncertainties, let's talk about the principle that governs it all. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. This principle essentially tells us that we can't know both the position and momentum of a particle at the same time. The more precisely we know one, the less precisely we can know the other. This inherent fuzziness is not due to any flaw in our measurement, but a fundamental feature of the quantum world. Now let's dive deeper into the quantum fields. Imagine a calm sea extending infinitely in all directions. This sea represents the quantum field, a fundamental entity that pervades the entire universe. Particles in this analogy are like waves on this sea. They are excitations or disturbances in the field. But here's the catch. Even when there are no particles, no excitations, the field is not truly at rest. It's constantly fluctuating due to the uncertainty principle, leading to the creation of particle-antiparticle pairs. These pairs spontaneously pop in and out of existence, borrowing energy from the field and then returning it, all in an instant. This idea of particles and antiparticles emerging spontaneously from the quantum field might sound strange, but it's a fundamental part of our understanding of the quantum realm. So, as we peel back the layers of our understanding, we find that even what we perceive as empty space isn't truly empty. It's teeming with these fleeting particles and antiparticles, a testament to the strange and wonderful nature of the quantum realm. In the quantum vacuum, there's a constant buzz of activity. Imagine a sea, but not one filled with water. This sea is filled with energy, and it's not calm. Instead, it's teeming with constant fluctuations, a ceaseless ebb and flow of energy. This is the quantum vacuum, and these fluctuations are the heartbeats of the quantum world. In this energetic sea, something extraordinary happens. Pairs of particles and antiparticles, known as virtual particles, spontaneously pop in and out of existence. They're called virtual because they exist fleetingly just for an infinitesimal moment before they annihilate each other and vanish back into the quantum vacuum. But what if these virtual particles could become real, tangible particles? It sounds like a science fiction tale, but it's firmly rooted in the laws of quantum physics. The trick lies in applying a strong electric field. When such a field interacts with these transient virtual particles, it can provide them with the energy they need to become real particles. This is no mere theoretical conjecture, it's an effect predicted by Julian Schwinger over 70 years ago, known as the Schwinger effect. The strong electric field polarizes the quantum vacuum, increasing the likelihood of separating these virtual particle-antiparticle pairs before they can annihilate each other. Instead of vanishing, they materialize into reality. This process is akin to tugging on the fabric of the quantum field, stretching it until it yields and births new particles. It's a testament to the inherent potency of the quantum vacuum, a place that's far from empty, but teeming with the potential for creation. This is the Schwinger effect, the creation of particles from nothing. The Schwinger effect isn't just a theoretical concept, it has been put to the test, and the results are nothing short of astonishing. Thanks to the ingenuity of modern scientists and a revolutionary material known as graphene, the Schwinger effect has been confirmed in a laboratory setting, a feat that was once thought impossible. Graphene, a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb lattice, has become a superstar in the scientific world due to its unique properties. It was chosen as the experimental medium for this groundbreaking research due to its ability to withstand extremely high electric fields, a necessary condition for observing the Schwinger effect. The experimental setup was designed to generate a powerful electric field across a tiny patch of graphene. As the voltage ramped up, the normally calm and empty space inside the graphene became a hotbed of activity. 
the intense electric field was able to polarize the quantum vacuum, an event akin to stirring a calm pond and creating ripples. These ripples are not your ordinary disturbances. They are quantum fluctuations, leading to the spontaneous creation of particle-antiparticle pairs. The electric field was so strong that it was able to rip these pairs apart before they could annihilate each other, effectively creating particles from nothing. This is the Schwinger effect in action. The verification of the Schwinger effect is not just a triumph for theoretical physics, but it also has profound implications for our understanding of the universe. It provides concrete evidence that the quantum vacuum is not an empty void, but a bustling arena of activity where particles can pop in and out of existence. It underscores the fact that in the quantum realm, the seemingly impossible can become reality. This experiment showed us that something can indeed emerge from nothing. It's a testament to the weird and wonderful world of quantum physics, where the rules of the game are unlike anything we're used to in our everyday lives. We've come a long way from the days of Newton and Einstein, and as we continue to delve deeper into the quantum realm, who knows what other surprises await us? If particles can emerge from nothing, could the universe itself have come from nothing? Let's take a moment to ponder on this. The Schwinger effect, along with the concept of quantum fluctuations, may hold the key to this intriguing question. The spontaneous creation of particles from nothing, a phenomenon that seemed counterintuitive to our common experience, is a well-observed reality in the quantum realm. But how does this relate to the origin of the universe? Well, imagine the state of affairs before the Big Bang. There was no space, no time, no matter. And yet from this state of nothingness, something sprang into existence. The universe, in all its grandeur and complexity, was born. Is it not possible that the same principles that allow particles to emerge from nothing could also have been responsible for the creation of the universe? Remember, the quantum vacuum is not a void. It is a bustling arena of energy and virtual particles constantly appearing and disappearing. These quantum fluctuations could have provided the spark that set off the Big Bang. The energy within the quantum vacuum could have been converted into matter, giving birth to galaxies, stars and planets. The quantum realm is a world of uncertainty, where particles pop in and out of existence, where energy can transform into matter and vice versa. This is the realm that may have given birth to our universe, a realm where something can indeed emerge from nothing. This idea shakes the very foundations of our understanding of the universe and its origins. But the truth is, the more we delve into the quantum realm, the more we realize that our universe is full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. The possibility that our universe may have emerged from the quantum vacuum is one such mystery. Could our vast, complex universe really have emerged from the quantum vacuum? The quantum realm challenges our conventional understanding of the world. It's a space where particles and antiparticles dance into existence from sheer nothingness, where the Schwinger effect, once a theoretical concept, is now a proven phenomenon. The quantum realm is not a void, but a vibrant, pulsating field buzzing with activity. It's where the Casimir effect demonstrates that even seemingly empty spaces are teeming with quantum fields. These fields, perpetually fluctuating, give rise to particles and antiparticles, the building blocks of our universe. We've seen how strong electric fields can polarize the quantum vacuum, increasing the likelihood of separating these virtual particle-antiparticle pairs. This leads us to an astounding conclusion. The universe in all its vastness could have emerged from nothing more than quantum fluctuations. Yet, for all we've learned, the quantum realm remains largely a mystery. It's a place where our everyday rules break down, where the impossible becomes possible. As we delve deeper into the quantum realm, we're left to ponder. What other mysteries does the universe hold? In physics and cosmology, the mathematical universe hypothesis, or MUH, also known as the ultimate ensemble theory, is a speculative theory of everything proposed by cosmologist Max Tegmark. According to the hypothesis, the universe is a mathematical object in and of itself. Furthermore, Tegmark suggests that not only is the universe mathematical, but it is also computable. This audacious hypothesis emerges from a fascinating intersection of physics, cosmology and mathematics. 
It's a brainchild of Max Tegmark, a cosmologist known for his daring propositions and a knack for peering into the very fabric of existence. And the fabric, as Tegmark would have it, is woven with mathematical threads. The mathematical universe hypothesis posits a universe that is not merely described by mathematics, but is mathematical. It's a notion that blurs the line between physical and mathematical existence. This isn't just a philosophical musing, it's a scientific proposition with profound implications. Imagine for a moment a universe where every particle, every force, every dimension is a mathematical entity. A universe where the laws of physics are simply the rules of mathematics applied on a cosmic scale. This is the universe that Tegmark invites us to consider, but it doesn't stop there. The hypothesis also suggests that the universe is computable. In other words, given sufficient computational power, it would be possible to simulate the entire universe down to the tiniest quantum fluctuation. This is a universe that is not only written in the language of mathematics, but can also be run on a cosmic computer. The implications of this are as vast as the universe itself. If the universe is a mathematical object, then it follows that it can be understood, predicted, and perhaps even manipulated using the tools of mathematics. It's a perspective that opens up new vistas for scientific exploration and challenges our understanding of reality. So, the mathematical universe hypothesis presents a radical take on the nature of reality, suggesting the universe itself is a mathematical structure. Now, what does it mean when we say the universe is a mathematical object? And how can it be computable? Let's delve deeper into this fascinating hypothesis. When Max Tegmark proposed the mathematical universe hypothesis, he suggested that our universe in its entirety is a mathematical structure. A structure so intricate and complex that it can be defined and described using the language of mathematics. The hypothesis is not merely about using mathematics to describe the universe, but it goes further to state that the universe itself is mathematics. To comprehend this, imagine the universe as a vast algebraic equation, with each element, each piece of matter, each energy particle, and even time and space being components of this equation. Now, if we could understand this mathematical equation completely, we could theoretically predict the future and decode the past. This is the essence of the idea that mathematical existence equals physical existence. But how is the universe computable? This part of the hypothesis is where things get even more interesting. Tegmark suggests that the universe, being a mathematical object, should be able to be computed or calculated. This implies that, given enough computational power, we could simulate the universe in all its complexity. This doesn't mean creating a virtual reality model of the universe, but rather a perfect mathematical representation of it. The entire cosmos, in all its grandeur, could be reduced to ones and zeros in a computer program, following the laws of physics as mathematical rules. However, it's essential to remember that this doesn't strip the universe of its beauty or mystery. Instead, it offers a new perspective, a different lens through which we can explore and understand the cosmos. The universe remains as awe-inspiring as ever, but now we see it not just as a physical entity, but as a symphony of numbers and equations, a grand mathematical poem. This is the essence of Tegmark's hypothesis, a provocative idea that challenges our understanding of the universe. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember you're not just gazing at stars and galaxies, but a complex, beautiful mathematical structure. Tegmark's theory doesn't stop at our universe alone. It's related to a multiverse concept with different levels of diversity. This intriguing concept posits not just a single cosmos, but an array of universes, each with its unique mathematical structure. Max Tegmark, the architect of the mathematical universe hypothesis, proposes four levels of multiverse, each more expansive and mind-bending than the last. At level one, we find an extension of our own universe. Picture an infinite cosmic quilt, where each patch is an observable universe like ours. These universes follow the same physics, but have different initial conditions, leading to a multitude of cosmic outcomes. Level two brings us the bubble universes, or parallel universes, each with its own laws of physics. Imagine blowing bubbles in the air. Each bubble is a universe, and the air is the multiverse. In these universes, 
the laws of physics could be drastically different from ours, making them altogether alien. The third level dives into the world of quantum mechanics, a field notorious for its paradoxes. Here, all possible histories and futures exist in a quantum superposition. Every decision, every turn of events creates a new universe, a concept often illustrated by the thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat. Finally, at level four, Tegmark suggests the existence of all mathematical structures. This level is the most abstract, as it encompasses all possible universes that can be described mathematically, regardless of whether their rules align with our familiar physics. These four levels of multiverse, each more mind-boggling than the last, spiral out from our own universe, pushing the boundaries of our understanding. They represent the ultimate diversity in structure, rules and realities. Different levels of universes, each with their unique mathematical structures, add yet another layer of complexity to the MUH. As we continue to delve into the mathematical universe hypothesis, we encounter an ever-expanding canvas of cosmic possibilities, challenging us to reassess our understanding of reality. As fascinating as the MUH is, it's not without its share of criticism and challenges. The mathematical universe hypothesis, as proposed by Max Tegmark, has indeed sparked a fair amount of debate in the scientific community. Let's delve into some of these critiques and challenges. One such critique comes from Jürgen Schmidhuber, who argues against the notion of assigning equal weight to all mathematical structures. Due to their infinite nature, Schmidhuber suggests that not all mathematical structures can be considered equally when conceptualizing the universe. This critique essentially challenges the fundamental premise of Tegmark's hypothesis. Another challenge to the MUH is its compatibility with Gödel's incompleteness theorem. This theorem, in layman's terms, states that not all truths can be proven within a given system of axioms. If we consider the universe as a mathematical structure, as Muich suggests, then Gödel's theorem implies that there would be truths about the universe that could never be proven mathematically. This notion seems to run counter to Tegmark's hypothesis, presenting a significant challenge. In response to these critiques and challenges, Tegmark has proposed a more restricted ensemble of universe representations describable by constructive mathematics. This adjustment to his hypothesis aims to address the issues raised by Schmidhuber and the implications of Gödel's theorem. Critics also question the testability and scientific support of M. Yoch. For a theory to gain acceptance in the scientific community, it must have testable predictions and empirical evidence to support it. As of now, the MUH seems to fall short in this regard. Despite these challenges, Tegmark stands by his hypothesis, arguing for its predictive power in revealing mathematical regularities in nature. Whether the mathematical universe hypothesis will ever gain widespread acceptance remains to be seen. But one thing's for certain, the debate it has sparked is pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the universe and the role of mathematics within it. At the heart of the MUH lies a profound debate, is mathematics an external reality or merely a human construction? This question is not just an idle pondering of philosophers and mathematicians, but a point of contention that has significant implications for our understanding of the universe. In one corner of the debate, we have those who believe that mathematics is an inherent part of the universe. They argue that the patterns and structures we find in mathematics are not human inventions, but rather discoveries of the inherent structure of reality itself. To these thinkers, the universe is a vast mathematical object, and our mathematical equations are simply descriptions of this objective reality. This viewpoint is often associated with the idea of Platonism, named for the ancient philosopher Plato who believed that mathematical entities exist independently of human minds. However, on the other side of the debate, there are those who argue that mathematics is a human construction, a language that we have developed to describe the world around us. From this perspective, mathematical entities are not discovered but invented, and they exist only in our minds. This viewpoint, often associated with the concept of formalism, posits that mathematics is essentially a game played with symbols, free of any inherent meaning. The mathematical universe hypothesis stands at the crossroads of these two perspectives. Max Tegmark, 
the proponent of Mu H, posits that the universe is a mathematical structure, a stance that leans towards Platonism. However, critics argue that this perspective neglects the human role in the creation and interpretation of mathematics, thereby challenging the validity of Mu H. Despite these challenges, Tegmark remains firm in his belief, proposing a more restricted ensemble of universe representations describable by constructive mathematics. He argues that the regularities found in nature are evidence of the mathematical nature of the universe, and hence support his hypothesis. This debate underscores the philosophical implications of the MUH, adding to the intrigue of this captivating theory. One of the most mysterious and very controversial subjects from the beginning of human history is God and all things related to him. It's a topic that transcends cultures, continents and millennia, sparking curiosity and debate in equal measure. A question that has, since time immemorial, loomed large in the minds of philosophers, scientists and the common man alike. A question that is as profound as it is perplexing. Did God create man or did man create God? This question, simple yet profound, forces us to delve into the very nature of existence itself. It leads us to concepts that are universal yet almost unfathomable. Concepts such as infinity, absence and nothingness. Infinity, an idea that stretches beyond our human comprehension and yet lies at the heart of our understanding of God. For what is God if not infinite? Infinite in power, infinite in wisdom, infinite in existence. But then we come across another concept, equally intriguing, the concept of absence. Can there be an absence of God? If God is everything, then surely the absence of God is nothingness. But what is nothingness? Is it simply the absence of matter, or is it something more profound? These concepts, while abstract and complex, are crucial in our quest to understand the divine. They challenge our perceptions, forcing us to question, to seek, to ponder. And in doing so, they bring us back to that eternal question, that recurring conundrum that lies at the heart of human curiosity. So we are left with a conundrum. Did God create man or did man, in his quest for understanding, create God? The humanistic portrayal of God, often seen in art and literature, is a stark contrast to the idea of a real God represented by physicochemical laws. The humanistic God, as many of us know it, is a reflection of our own image, a divine being with human attributes, emotions and intentions. This God acts in ways we understand, intervenes in our affairs, and even takes sides in our conflicts. This is a God who is swayed by prayers and pleased by rituals, a God who is painted, sculpted and written about, a God who is essentially human. But now, let us shift our gaze from this anthropocentric perspective. Let's imagine a God not as a grand architect, not as a benevolent father, not even as a conscious entity. Rather, let's think of a real God that exists in the intricate dance of atoms, in the ceaseless expansion of the universe, in the fundamental laws that govern everything around us. This God is not a being, but a process. A process that weaves galaxies out of cosmic dust, that lights up stars and snuffs them out, that builds planets and maybe, just maybe, sparks life on them. This God is not swayed by prayers, but governed by principles. Principles that are as unfaltering as they are unfeeling. The principles of physics and chemistry. The real God, if we were to use such a term, is the constant interplay of forces and particles. The harmony of laws that create, destroy and recreate everything in the universe. A symphony of creation and destruction playing out across the cosmos, conducted by the universal laws themselves. Thus, the humanistic God and the real God stand at opposite ends. One is a reflection of ourselves, the other a representation of the universe. One is comfortingly familiar, the other is dauntingly alien. Yet both are attempts to understand the same mystery, to answer the same question. What is the nature of the divine? It is these universal laws, perhaps, that define the real power of God. In this vast universe, God exists not just in the present, but in the past and the future simultaneously. Our journey through the cosmos brings us to a fascinating concept, the intersection of God and time. As humans, we perceive time as a linear progression. We're born, we live and we die. But when we consider God, this human concept of time turns on its head. 
Imagine a being so vast, so powerful, that the mere constraints of time are irrelevant. This is the divine realm where God resides, a realm that transcends our earthly dimensions. The past, the present, and the future are not separate entities, but simply different facets of a single timeless existence. Take a moment to ponder this. God isn't waiting for the future to happen or reminiscing about the past. Every moment, every event, every whisper of the cosmos exists all at once. The birth of a star billions of light years away, the fall of a leaf in a quiet forest, the laughter of a child, all these moments are eternally present to God. This concept may seem overwhelming, even mind-bending, but it underlines the very nature of the divine entity we're exploring. God is not subject to time, rather, Time is subject to God. Every tick of the clock, every rotation of our Earth, every orbit of our Sun around the Milky Way galaxy, all these are embraced within the infinite reach of God's existence. What does this mean for us, for our understanding of the universe and our place within it? It means that in the grand scheme of things, we are part of an intricate, timeless tapestry woven with the threads of the cosmos. And overseeing this cosmic tapestry is a being unbound by the constraints of time, a being who is present at every moment, at every place, at every event. God, then, is not bound by our linear perception of time. Every celestial body in motion, every twinkle of a distant star, is perhaps a testament to God's influence. In our vast universe, the motion of masses is a grand spectacle that unfolds against the backdrop of infinite space. The dance of celestial bodies, their interactions and movements, are all guided by the invisible hands of universal laws. But what if these laws, these invisible hands, are the very manifestations of God's power? The notion of the wall of nothingness may seem perplexing. Yet it is this very concept that might hold the key to understanding the motion of celestial bodies. Picture a massive cosmic canvas stretching out into the vast unknown, a wall of nothingness. It is against this seemingly empty backdrop that the universe's masses interact their movements creating a cosmic ballet. The elasticity of this interaction, the give and take between celestial bodies and the wall of nothingness, is a phenomenon that mirrors the dynamism of life itself. Like a spring that contracts and expands, the universe too, in its interaction with the wall of nothingness, exhibits a similar elasticity. And who, if not God, could be the grand conductor orchestrating this cosmic ballet? This dynamic interplay of forces, the elasticity of interactions, could be seen as the divine symphony of God's creation. It's as if every movement, every celestial twirl, is a note in this grand composition, a testament to God's influence in the universe. In this light, the wall of nothingness isn't merely an empty canvas, but a cosmic stage. It's a stage where the celestial bodies perform their dance, a dance that could very well be choreographed by God. Could this motion, this dance of celestial bodies, be a divine symphony conducted by God himself? As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, we find ourselves drawn closer to the enigma that is God, the supreme divine conductor of this magnificent cosmic orchestra. So here we are, tiny specks in an infinite universe, pondering the existence of a supreme creator. We are but minuscule beings in this vast expanse of space and time, continuously striving to comprehend the concept of God. Throughout our history, we have painted numerous portraits of God, each reflecting our own hopes, fears, and understanding of the world around us. In our quest for understanding, we have explored the idea of a humanistic God, a deity molded in our image with our virtues and vices. However, we have also pondered the existence of a real God, represented not by human characteristics, but by the physico-chemical laws that orchestrate the symphony of the universe. Our journey has led us to contemplate the nature of God in relation to time. We have wondered if God exists in the past, present and future simultaneously. The concept of a timeless, omnipresent God has both fascinated and perplexed us pushing us to question our own understanding of time and existence. We have also delved into the intricate dance of the cosmos, contemplating the motion of masses in the universe. We have hypothesized that this dance is a result of the elastic interaction of these masses with an elusive wall of nothingness. In all of this, we have sought to understand our place in the grand scheme of things. How do we, as human beings, fit into this vast, complex universe 
What is our relationship with the Supreme Creator we are ceaselessly trying to comprehend? These are questions that have challenged us, fascinated us, and driven our curiosity for millennia. They are questions that we may never fully answer, but that will continue to inspire our exploration and our wonder. As we gaze into the night sky, we are left to ponder. How do we fit into this divine cosmic puzzle? What do you think about the reality of your existence? How real are you? What if everything you experience and observe around you, including your home, people, and everything you've ever known, is not a physical reality, but a detailed simulation? Take a moment to consider this. The idea is not as far-fetched as it might seem. It's a concept that has been contemplated by some of the greatest minds, and it's known as the self-simulation hypothesis, interpretation of quantum mechanics. This hypothesis proposes a radical shift in perspective. It suggests that our reality, our universe, is not a physical entity but rather a self-simulation. It's an intricate, highly detailed product of pure thought, a grand design originating from fundamental algorithms and laws. Instead of viewing the universe as a tangible, physical entity, this hypothesis presents it as a conceptual self-simulation. It's a strange loop, a nested hierarchy of sub-thoughts, a grand thought in itself. Every experience we have, every observation we make, is part of this grand thought, this self-simulation. This view challenges the traditional notions of reality and existence. It pushes the boundaries of our understanding, prompting us to question the very fabric of our perceived reality. Are we part of a sophisticated simulation? Is everything we know and understand merely a product of thought? This is not a concept plucked from the realms of science fiction. It's a serious scientific theory that goes beyond the traditional boundaries of science, exploring the connections between consciousness, philosophy, and the fundamental nature of existence. So, let's delve deeper into this mind-bending concept. Let's explore the self-simulation hypothesis and its implications. Let's question the reality of our existence and consider the possibility that we might just be part of a grand thought, a sophisticated self-simulation. Remember, these are not mere philosophical musings, but theories backed by science that challenge our understanding of reality. Enter the self-simulation hypothesis interpretation of quantum mechanics, a theory that posits our universe as a strange loop. This fascinating hypothesis takes a leap beyond the conventional understanding of reality, beckoning us into a realm where the universe isn't a physical entity, but a conceptual self-simulation. Imagine the universe as a grand cosmic computer, not composed of tangible silicon microprocessors, but of pure thought. It's a place where the fundamental laws of physics are not just rules for matter and energy, but algorithms guiding the flow of cosmic thought. This hypothesis is a radical departure from materialism. It suggests that at the most basic level, the universe isn't a physical construct, but a grand thought. In essence, the self-simulation hypothesis views reality as a complex web of nested thoughts, a strange loop that simulates itself into existence. It proposes that the universe in its entirety is a self-rendering image, a hologram brought into being by the act of contemplation. This hypothesis doesn't just redefine our understanding of reality, but it also challenges our perception of existence. It suggests that everything we perceive, every star in the night sky, every blade of grass under our feet, and even our very consciousness, is a product of this grand cosmic thought. So in the grand scheme of things, what are we? Are we physical beings in a material universe? Or are we thoughts nested within thoughts, nested within the grand thought of the universe itself? The self-simulation hypothesis suggests the latter. In this view, everything we perceive is a nested hierarchy of sub-thoughts. Some scientists connect this hypothesis to panpsychism, a philosophy that treats everything as consciousness or thought. Here's a thought to ponder. What if everything in the universe, from the smallest particle to the largest galaxy, is conscious or thought? This is the intriguing connection the self-simulation hypothesis has to panpsychism. Panpsychism, a philosophy that's been pondered by great thinkers over centuries, 
proposes that every aspect of the universe, every atom, every quark, and every photon, holds a level of consciousness. It's a theory that makes consciousness a fundamental element of the universe, just as essential as space and time. Now, consider the self-simulation hypothesis, which suggests that our universe is a grand thought, a conceptual self-simulation that originated from fundamental algorithms and laws. This hypothesis goes beyond the physical, beyond the tangible, and delves into a realm where the universe is a nested hierarchy of sub-thoughts. It's a non-materialistic approach that challenges our understanding of reality. When we intertwine these two theories, a fascinating possibility emerges. If the universe is a self-simulation and everything in it is conscious, as panpsychism suggests, then we're living in a reality where every particle, every wave of light, every star in the night sky is a part of this grand thought. It's a reality where consciousness isn't confined to living beings but permeates every corner of the cosmos. It's a concept that challenges our traditional understanding of consciousness, expanding it from the confines of the brain to encompass the entire universe. This connection between the self-simulation hypothesis and panpsychism promotes a universe where consciousness isn't an anomaly, but the norm, where thought isn't confined to humans, but is a universal property. This makes for a fascinating perspective, doesn't it? A universe where everything is conscious, where everything is thought. The theory also explores the idea of creating designer consciousness and the potential for highly powerful mind simulations. Now let's dive into the fascinating concept of designer consciousness. This is not a new trend in fashion or home decor, but rather an advanced notion that challenges our understanding of existence itself. Designer consciousness, as the name suggests, implies the creation of consciousness sculpted and shaped by the hands of an unknown architect. The self-simulation hypothesis takes us on a mind-bending journey exploring the idea of creating highly powerful mind simulations. Imagine creating a consciousness so advanced and intricate that it can simulate an entire universe within itself. A consciousness so powerful that it could create a reality indistinguishable from the one we perceive. This concept stems from the idea that our universe itself is a self-simulation. If our reality is a product of pure thought, a grand idea, then couldn't we, the products of this grand idea, also simulate our own realities? What if we could create a consciousness that experiences a reality entirely different from ours? A reality with different laws of physics, different dimensions, even different forms of life. Would this simulated consciousness perceive its reality as we perceive ours? The idea of designer consciousness pushes us to question the very fabric of our existence. It compels us to consider the extent of our capabilities and the potential of our minds. It makes us wonder if we are a product of a designer consciousness, could we, in turn, become the designers of new consciousness? The self-simulation hypothesis doesn't just challenge our understanding of reality, it expands it, introducing possibilities that were once confined to the realm of science fiction. This is not just a hypothesis, it's a doorway into a world of endless possibilities, a universe of thought waiting to be explored. Imagine the possibility of creating a consciousness that could simulate an entire universe. While controversial, these ideas encourage contemplation of philosophy and consciousness beyond traditional scientific boundaries. The self-simulation hypothesis, a theory that paints our universe as a grand thought, a self-simulation, is indeed a radical departure from traditional views of reality. It pushes the boundaries of our understanding and challenges the conventional wisdom of objective physical existence. This hypothesis encourages us to consider the universe not merely as a physical entity, but as an intricate tapestry of thought. It invites us to question the nature of reality, to explore the concept of existence beyond the tangible, and to grapple with the abstract notion of a universe born from pure thought. However, as with any groundbreaking theory, it invites controversy. Critics argue that the proposition of a universe as a self-simulation is too abstract, too detached from empirical evidence. They contend that it is an untestable hypothesis, one that strays too far from the scientific method that is the bedrock of our understanding of the universe. Yet, proponents counter that our understanding of the universe is shaped by our consciousness, our ability to think and perceive. They argue that if our consciousness can shape our perception of reality, then why can't reality itself be a product of consciousness? 
The self-simulation hypothesis serves as a catalyst for contemplation, for philosophical discourse, for the exploration of consciousness and its role in shaping reality. It challenges us to expand our perspectives, to step outside our comfort zones, and to ponder the very nature of existence. It provokes us to question, what if our universe, our existence, is not a product of physical laws, but of thought? What if our reality is not a physical entity, but a detailed simulation, a grand thought? So, we leave you with this thought. Could our universe, including human existence, be a grand thought, a self-simulation? Ponder this, and remember, the universe might just be a strange loop of consciousness. Today, we delved into the profound question, why is there something rather than nothing? This inquiry challenges our understanding of existence and prompts us to seek explanations beyond conventional bounds. In this discussion, we explored how traditional notions of explanation may fall short when applied to such a fundamental question. Drawing on insights from philosophy, we expanded our conceptual framework to accommodate the possibility of grounding explanations for existence. By considering the work of past philosophers and proposing new avenues for research, we've embarked on a journey to deepen our understanding of existence itself. As we conclude, I invite you to ponder these questions further and to join us in exploring the mysteries of existence. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring and keep expanding your horizons.